Now, book club never does this, but we read book one of The View by Arthur Untamed and loved it so much that we read book two. Y'all want to hear about it? Here it goes. So me the intro to your book review. Right. <laughs> hey, y'all. Hey. So, listen. This review is by way of Tam Telling Tales as well as ICU Reading and Social Network. We selected The View as our September and October book reads for the last couple of months. And this has been by far a very enjoyable couple months when it came to discussion because this author gave us so much to love and to hate about these books. Now I'm going to break down this um, review into two segments because it'll be the first book and then it'll be the second book. So just know that at some point if you haven't read both of the books that you'll be able to break away and not you know have any spoilers or anything like that. But definitely um, you're going to want to be mindful of the marker for the timing so that you don't go into book two because then you'll probably end up with some spoilers. So first let's start with book one, shall we? Carly has always led a sheltered life and she's had no complaints. To her, life is perfect. The perfect career, the perfect friends, the perfect husband. But after a joyous dinner party turns disastrous, Carly's perfect world is turned inside out. As she struggles to hold on to the life she holds dear, in comes the perfect stranger, Hudson Lewis. His charm and breathtaking view on life takes Carly by storm and awakens a dormant beast that unknowingly lies within. No holds barred. Carly embraces her new lease on life with a vengeance. But... When a melting pot of lies and deceit is exposed, everyone's life will forever be changed as it brings everything to light and plain view. You know, I had an opportunity to talk to the author about this book, um, part one. I didn't get the chance to talk about part two, but part one had an interview with the author if you haven't watched that, I'm going to put the link to that video in the description box so that you can take a look at it. It's going to have spoilers in it, just so you know. So if you haven't read this book, then maybe not watch it. But if you have, then go back and check that out. But um, <clears throat> the author did a, a very, very good job writing the love scenes because this is ultimately a romance novel and she put her foot in them love scenes okay the problem i have with these love scenes however is that there was just too much chaos happening around them that i just couldn't feel good about feeling good about these scenes you know what i'm saying it was like, oh, if only it was just somebody else, then I could feel right with this, but I couldn't. And I'm really trying hard not to um, not to spoil um, any of this book for you guys. It's hard, though. It's so hard because I want to tell y'all about certain stuff. There is a term that I coined when I was talking with the author about this book and I can't use it because then I might kind of give away some of the book and I don't do that. But child, this book was very well written. It's not a short book, but it's an easy book to read because there is always something engaging happening the author is also a poet, and we have poetry throughout this book as well. Um, I really want to spoil some stuff for y'all. I'm just, I'm not going to do it. 
but just know that um book one gave me plenty of characters to dislike like i'm trying to think who who i like um yeah i don't like nobody i i ain't nobody to like okay i mean just some of the secondary characters you just kind of feel neutral about them you know you don't really love or hate none of them but these main characters which we have carly we got michael and we got hudson i don't like none of them and if i'm gonna be perfectly honest the main person that i don't like is carly like I have a feeling that Carly is, I don't have a feeling, I know it. Carly is a chick that is so pretty and so wholesome that, you know, the men just think she is the best thing since sliced bread. You know what I'm saying? But little do they know, <clears throat> Carly Oh, she's a oh, I, I, Listen, I'm trying, I'm trying real hard not to give y'all a spoiler, but y'all, Carly's a whore. She's a whore. And not a whore with one O, but a whore with multiple O's. Whew, there, I said it. Ah. Uh, I know I maybe shouldn't have said it, but I had to say it. I'm saying, if you watching, girl, I'm sorry. But I had to tell the people. I had to. Y'all, by the time we got to the end of this book, I'm sitting here like, wait. It's over? Like, I... There's no more. Lo and behold, baby, it was a whole nother book too. I didn't even know it at the time, but I found out. It's all read book two. Now, the great thing about book two is we got to delve a little bit deeper into some other relationships, i.e. the mama and the daddy of Carly and baby. <laughs> That was about as entertaining as seeing Carly and her whole little situation unfold. You hear me? Before I go any further, let me give you a little synopsis of book two by Untamed. Take that back. I'm actually going to make sure that you guys know that I'm about to talk about book two. And so what could possibly happen is in talking about book two, it could give away some stuff. That was in book one. So if you haven't read either one of them, just tread lightly because I'm I'm trying my best, but the way my emotions are set up about this book, y'all, I can't even for sure, for sure guarantee that I'm not going to say something that could be considered a spoiler. So y'all just got to, y'all got to be careful. If you think you need to leave me now, it's okay. Y'all can go ahead, but make sure y'all come back after y'all read both the books. But also make sure that you have subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell so you know every time I upload a video. Now let's give you a synopsis of book two, shall we? Actions have consequences. Carly and Hudson's affair was filled with sugary romance and explosive sex encompassed in a close-knit friendship. As they begin their new life together as husband and wife, the idea of who they are as a couple quickly begins to fizzle as the pressures of real life surmount. The newlywed couple struggles to keep their old loving ways intact while unknowingly being thrust into plots determined to separate their union. The weave of deceit they've spun with their relationship opens Pandora's box as friends turn into enemies and long buried secrets are resurrected that'll rock them to their core. 
as secrets, lies, and betrayal gets revealed, Carly and Hudson's world begins to unravel behind the decisions they've made. With the eyes stacked against them, it begs to ask the question, is the grass truly greener on the other side? Well, well, well. We've gotten to book two. And of course, it is apparent that Carly and Hudson is together now, child. This is like the worst couple ever, in my opinion. It's like the worst couple ever in book history. Because these two people being together has sparked so much turmoil in the lives of everybody else around them that it's just... It's sad. It's so it's so sad to see everybody's life destroyed because of Carly and her being a whore. Carly's a whore. Okay? And because of her whore rich ways, not everybody likes to turn upside down. Can't nobody get no peace in their house. Everybody's just going through it, honey. Oh, and it's all her fault. I mean, I don't really like her dudes that much. But again, I still got to put the number one person that I hate, Carly. She it. She is it. But don't get me wrong, because them Negroes that she messing with, I don't like them neither. Um, These men in her life, they really... They a piece of work. The only man that I can honestly say I can deal with is I can deal with her daddy. And I can deal with uh, the lawyer friend, Michael's lawyer friend, you know, because I didn't mention this when we were talking about book one. But, you know, these is, these people is saved. You know what I mean? They go to church and everything. And um, we kind of noticed in book two that everybody had kind of strayed away from the Lord, okay? That everybody had kind of strayed away. And then we had the one friend that was trying to pull pull them back into the, into the realm, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, yeah, see, everybody needs a friend like that. So we had that one friend that was in there. But, um, yeah, the folks was like, I'm, I ain't messing with church no more. No, we was in book one, they was... Oh, deacon, and oh, coming to church, and oh, and and book two, they said, holla. <sighs> but you can't be turning your back on the Lord like that, because um, he'll show out on you, because baby, <laughs> God said, oh, you said you don't want me to be in this? Oh, okay, then. I'm going to leave it alone. Mm -hmm. See how that works out for you. Huh? Okay, then. But, uh, needless to say, we, I am feeling like we about to get a, a real big old prayer session happening eventually in book three. Because, y'all, <laughs> it's going to be a book three. And I really feel like that's when, like, we're going to see God work some miracles and do some extra special things. With all of these people, I'm I'm just I'm feeling it in my spirit, huh, huh. But um, in the meantime, it was just a bunch of mess in in book two. I was here for it though, cause everybody's life was getting turned upside down. I'm gonna tell you who who was getting the side eye from me, and that was Carly Mama. She got on my nerves. Carly Daddy, um. Carly Daddy was interesting. Carly Daddy was interesting. And uh, things is really going to uh, take off when it comes to that mama and that daddy of Carly and book three. I can tell that too. Because when she ended book two, she let us know, oh, that it's about to be some ish. <laughs> it's about to be some. Um, and I can't wait. I can't wait because apparently... Uh, the apple don't fall far from the tree when it comes to calling her mama. Hmm? 
But uh, let me tell y'all what else I liked about this book. Oh, the poetry. The poetry was so, so nice. Because I told y'all, I tame is a poet. And she had it all up and through this book, y'all. And I loved it so. What else I want to tell y'all about? I think the sex was steamier in book. one yeah book one it was steamier but it was very un forbidden not unforbidden it was forbidden because unforbidden would mean that it was okay to do so forbidden it was forbidden in book one but it was it was pretty hot and steamy um oh but it was some good it was some good watching it was some good box to rock around in book two. Like, there's just, that was consistent, okay? Let's get that straight. The bounce wheel wheel was consistent in book one and book two. It was, it was fire. It was, whew, let me breathe <laughs> right fast. It was, when you read it on your lunch break at work, you just like, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> I'm about to close my office door because, baby. <laughs> TMI. Y'all know I was just playing, right? For real, I was just playing. About the door closing thing at work. Not about them sex scenes. Them sex scenes. Was... Yeah, buddy. I don't know how many times I have said this. But I don't even like book series. Like, I'm a standalone kind of girl. I just want to read it, be done, go to something else, right? But I'm just not about to be able to do that. Because now that I know it's going to be a book three, like, I got to read it. And I just, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing because Untamed just really got me going against my grain here. I ain't want to read another book. I'm going to read it though. I think you guys have got the drift. I really loved The View. Tale Telling Tales gave this book Five acrylic nails. I had a great time reading this book and discussing it with my book club, I See You Reading and Social Network. If you haven't joined our chat group over on Facebook, make sure that you do that because we do all kind of great, fun, wonderful stuff over there, you know, and you should just come hang out with us sometime. I'm telling you right now, Fridays is a freaky friday and don't talk crazy they nasty okay and then we also have freestyle friday as well where authors come on and get a topic at the beginning of the day and write a story and baby some of these stories be hot fire and at this point i think it's like 20 some odd books that originated from freestyle friday so I say all of that to say that we have a great time over there. So, make sure that you check us out. I'm Tam. I'm telling tales. Read a book.